Hello everybody, this is Brian Zajac from the CG School. Um, welcome to the Photoshop Beginner to Intermediate uh, one hour free webinar class. Um, I thank you for joining me. This is a partnership between CG Architects, Vine 3D, and 3D ATS. So let's go ahead and get started with our agenda first. All right, so today we're going to cover a few things. Uh, this is more new stuff for CS5. I thought I should cover today. We're going to, the, the first thing is actually uh, covered, and I believe they started it in CS2 or CS3. It's the uh, smart objects. I'm going to talk about smart objects versus regular objects or the not so smart objects. Um, then we're going to go ahead and move on to the vanishing point filter. Then we're going to end up with the puppet warp. We're going to take a palm tree. Uh, via the 3D ATS 3D Share program, which I'm going to show you here, you can find that information when you go to 3dats.com. You click on this Create Share comment or Share and Download Free Onyx 3D Vegetation. You click on that. Go to the Silver Date Palm. Click on that image, and right click and save image as. So. That'll be the file I work with. So again, we're going to go with Smart Objects, Vanishing Point, and then Puppet Warp. So let's go ahead and dive right into the Smart Objects. I've got Photoshop open here. A few things to keep in mind. I'm working with the Essentials tab. Um, I suggest you do the same. However, if you know Photoshop pretty well, um, you know, do whatever way you want, but um, what we're taking a look here is two cars. One car is a smart object, the other car is not. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and move this up a little bit so that we can see more layers, because some of this stuff is just not needed. Okay, so we have this car that has a mask in there, and again, um, this is all explained in the two-day uh, webinar that we do. Um, this is just the portion of that. So for some of you, it might be difficult to get some of the lingo. For other of you, it might be just as the, like the back of your hand. I, everybody's from every different skill length here, so um, I'll do the best I can to make this all work. So anyways, um, if you take a look here with the not-so-smart car and the smart car, which is here on layer uh, 3, The first thing you need to know about smart cars, or I'm um, sorry, smart cars, smart objects, is um, scalability. If you go under Edit, Transform, Scale. Now, if I if I go down, if I really squeeze that down to small, and then I put it back up. Okay, you see how it's all fuzzy. It doesn't remember the information. It's not smart. So. Our goal is to work on something that's a little bit smarter than that, and that's where smart objects come in. And yes, I'm going to say smart a lot here, but it's just the way it works. So let's go on to the smart object. If I scale her down a little bit, oh, I'm sorry. One thing I forgot to show you, and I'll tell you more about this later, is the, uh, the shadow here. I'm going to go ahead and shut that off. And I'll explain why that doesn't work in a bit. So let's go and scale this down. And let's go ahead and scale her back up. As you can see, no degradation. Why is that? Because Photoshop is remembering the data from an external file. A smart object is a file that references back to an original file. And because it does, it remembers that information instead of the information that is actually in this file. So you have a smart object and you have the not-so-smart object. And just here, I'm just clicking on the history button. So for you who don't know what the history is, I'm just going back to the original file so that um, so everything's evened out correctly. So the one thing that people need to also know about is that there are some parts that are not um, that cannot be cannot work with it. Um, for example, this sh shadow layer. If I turn on the road that I the road thing here, you'll see that we've got some blending here and here. However, 
if I try to make this a smart object, which as I go through this, you'll, you'll see why, um, I have a blending option on here called hard light. And this blends the best for the shadow that you see here. This shadow here, that's blend better instead of hard light. Instead of using it on normal, see how it has that white kind of fringe around it? Well, if you put on hard light, it blends better because that's the way it works. Um, blending, again, will be taught more in the today class. So for now, um, you can't make that a smart object because you're blending in this this um, uh, this file itself. It's not from the external file. And if you try to put the these um, try to make a smart object with a hard light in the blending, it actually makes a hard light for both the car and the shadow. So it doesn't it doesn't really work right. And it, it just trust me on this one. There are just some things that you have to play around with that work, and some things that don't work. But on typical one object kind of things, it works great. Um, just some of the transparency is a little bit off. Okay, so with that with that done, um, there are ways to make it um, a smart object act differently. Like, for example, if we take off the road layer and we can take this same car and, and duplicate it a bunch of times. In fact, let's just go ahead and do that. If I just take this, I'm sorry, we have to go to the car smart layer. And actually, let's just duplicate that layer. <laughs> um, let's go under, uh, right click on the layer and click um, duplicate layer. And we'll call this the um, small car. And since we have a folder called smart cars already, let's call it smart car too. Okay, so all I did was press Control T. It did the same thing as Edit, um, Transform, uh, Scale. This is transforming or scaling or doing a bunch of stuff to the object itself. So we're going to scale that down and make it nice and small. Okay. Move this up here. Now, here's the way that smart objects work. Uh, on an external file. If I double click on the car smart layer here, it's going to go to an external file that in contains that information. And here's our smart car. Now, if you notice on here, on this, on this file, um, we can do a right click on it and do blending options. We're going to change the color of this car. And we'll put this over here. So to go back again, if you right click on the layer, remember you have to be in that external file to make this happen. Right click on the layer, click blending options. Then click color overlay. Then click, instead of normal, put it on color. Boom, you got a nice really red car. But we'll take that red color and we'll make it a little bit nicer. And again, this is a very quick and dirty way of doing it. You can be able to mask out areas of it so that the that the actual car itself is a different color and not the wheels and so on and so forth. Again, you would know that more by uh, tracing paths or uh, or masking it out or doing some of the other functions that Photoshop has to make that happen. And it's totally possible. So just press OK there. We press OK. And then... We have to save the file. So file, save, but do not close it, okay? So now we've saved the file. Now watch what happens when you go over to the other file. See? This changes and that changes. Now, that's going to come in very handy when you want to duplicate objects many times over. For example, trees in a scene. So you've got, um, you've got a bunch of different trees that you want to go ahead and have a